guys, Gary Fox here, and tonight we're going to talk about creating distortion. And uh, I think I'm going to call this sprouting some fuzz. <laughs> Tired of uh, nerdy names. Anyhow, so we will start up a program called QCS. And for those of you that have seen this before, uh, what it is, it allows me to draw a schematic. And then I can do some analysis on that schematic. And uh, so what we're going to do is first we're going to do an op amp. And I have written a whole bunch of uh, blog posts about op amps. So I'm going to try to describe it simply here. But those blog posts will give you a whole lot more about them. Basically, an op amp is, an, is a, normally an IC circuit, an integrated circuit. And it's a relatively small chip. It's designed to uh, basically be an amplifier, and it's really simple to implement, which is why I chose to do this this way. And then, as long as you keep the numbers in at around a 10,000 ohm range it works very well and if the frequencies are in the audio kind of range which 500 hertz is definitely audio because we just heard it <laughs> in the previous video okay and what this type of amplifier is that I implemented here is called a non-inverting it means that the output signal is the same phase as the input signal and the gain is defined by these two resistors called R2 and R1 in this drawing. I think I call them RF and RG in another drawing. And uh, basically the gain is 1 plus RF divided by RG, or in this case 90,000 90, divided by 10,000, which is 9. So I got a gain of, uh, of 2. Uh, 10, I'm sorry, a gain of 10, because I got 9 plus 1. So, what we can do with this thing, you always have to run a DC simulation, but we're not going to look at that. We're going to run this thing called a transient simulation. And uh, I start at 0, and I stop at 2 milliseconds, which is 2 complete cycles of this. And uh, it has 1,000 points on it. Thousand points of light. Sorry, I'm a little bit, uh, I don't know what I am today. So, anyhow, we'll run that simulation and see what we end up getting. And with that simulation, you see that I got plus or minus one volt going in, and I got plus or minus ten volts going out. So, I got my gain of ten. And, uh, the output looks exactly like what the input does, which means there is no distortion whatsoever. Uh, and although if we really analyze it, there probably is some distortion, but very, very little. So this thing works really good. It's really simple. So let's go back into it. Now, uh, one thing about a uh, op amp is that they require what's called a bipolar power supply in their standard form. It's easy to implement here on the schematic and the simulation. So I got plus or minus 15 volts. So we will now do a type of distortion. It's called overdrive. And let me go back to the schematics. And we'll go to the overdrive schematic. Which starts out exactly the same as our previous one. I have changed nothing on this one. And if we run the uh, we run the simulation, we're going to get the same answer. At least we should. And we did. So everything's hunky-dory. So how do we get distortion? And both if we want it and if we don't want it. And today we're going to deal with uh, one way that they distort. One way is that we simply overdrive the input here. So we will modify this from a 1 volt input to a uh, 1.5. That will distort some. Apply that. And now we will run the simulation. 
and you see we start cutting off the top of this uh, sine wave here and we cut it off worse in the negative direction than we do in the positive direction excuse me and uh, the reason for that is the inner workings of the op amp and if you use a plus or minus 15 volt power supply you normally can run plus or minus 10 volts very easily and then you got a little bit of headroom well, we got into that headroom so let's go ahead and let's play with this thing a little more. Let's modify that input up to uh, to two volts. And what happened here? Let's close that. Let's close this. Okay, and you see it cut off more of the top of it. So we're starting to uh, distort the heck out of this. We're turning our sine wave into a square wave. I believe that is what happened on my uh, guitar amplifier. That's basically the method that they use. They have a pre-amplifier, and they crank the gain of it up, and the controls I used were just buttons. But those buttons uh, crank the gain of that preamp up, and that caused the uh, second amplifier to clip just like this. This is what this is called clipping. It clips the top off of it. And uh, by doing that, the reason I think that's what's happening, because I had much more feedback on the uh, higher distortion settings. So they basically were increasing that preamp gain, and it was causing it to feed back from the guitar to the amplifier because I wasn't standing far enough away from the amplifier. Okay, that's one way of uh, distorting it. And that applies whether you're wanting distortion, if you're wanting it in the way that uh, we're wanting it when we have a uh, fuzz box on our guitar amp, or it also applies if you don't want it, and uh, somehow you did something wrong. So we're going to modify this back to one volt. Oops, I better get one vote. Okay, and now we're going to come up with some other ways to distort it. One way is that we could increase the gain of this thing. So we'll increase the gain. We'll modify this from 90 to, uh, let's say, 200. Okay, I got enough zeros in there. And now we're going to have uh, 20 plus 1, 21 times the gain. That should distort. So we'll run the simulation. And yep, that distorted. <laughs> and I'm curious if we got the same picture this time that we did last time. Let's run it again. Yep, that's still distorted. And it should distort about the same because... Uh, we're right around the same amount of gain that we had last time by running a higher input. Okay, that was another way of distorting, so we just increased the gain. Uh, let's see, let's modify the properties back. Let's put it back where it was. Okay, another way of distorting the gain is not having enough power going into this thing. Let's double check, make sure that everything's hunky-dory. It is. I'm back where I'm supposed to be. So now we'll modify these power supplies. And let's go to uh, 10 volts. So we're going to not have any headroom in this. And we need some headroom. Since we don't have any headroom, we'll assume that we're probably going to uh, clip some at the top. And we did. We didn't clip a lot, but we clipped some. And we have less output than what we did before. Remember last time we was clipping around the 12 volt range. This time we're clipping at about 9 volts. If we uh, decrease this further, and I think we can get by with uh, 
5 volts on each one. We're going to clip the heck out of it. So that's something, you know, if your stereo is starting to distort and put out a little bit of fuzz, it might be because uh, the power supply is going bad, not the amplifier. So we'll run this one. And you see, we clipped the heck out of it this time. We almost got a square wave. We'd be getting a lot more of the uh, higher harmonics this way. Okay, let's take it back. we got one more distortion that we'll do to this one. See, I'm going to go to 15 volts, and that's not the way you do it. By the way, on QUCS, if you're running it, uh, you always have to edit the properties this way. If you change the number that's being displayed, that doesn't change the value. Learned that one the hard way. Okay, we got it back. Okay, we got one more way that I know of to uh, overdrive this thing. What we're going to do is we're going to start loading it down. So we got 10,000 ohms load. Uh, I'm going to modify that. Let's try it at about 5,000 ohms. I think it'll still work. It's straining a little bit more, but I believe this one will work. Yep, we're still getting an okay value. Uh, that means that the circuit's got enough oomph to drive drive at that value. Let's take it on down to uh, 1,000 ohms. Let's see if it has enough oomph to drive at. We still are getting it. Chip would probably be getting a little warm air if it had to do this for a very long time. But QUCS doesn't really simulate that. So, heck, let's just keep on going down. Let's go down to about 5,000 ohms. 500 ohms, I'm sorry. And we're still driving it. Well, let's just keep on going. Go to 100. We'll burn this sucker out yet, except it's nothing but a picture on a screen, so, you know, we can get by doing that. Actually, the chip has a circuit in it, even if this was real life, where it would uh, prevent it from driving too hard. And you can see we now have a square wave. So we managed to overdrive it, the amount of current that the thing could put out, to the point that it uh, started clipping again. That's something to think about. If you start paralleling speakers on your, uh, your audio system, and you don't want fuzz, uh, you may actually end up with it because you're overdriving your amps and your amp's going to cut out. Then again, you may just smoke your amp. So uh, you need to really think about if you're going to start paralleling a bunch of speakers out there. Each speaker's 8 ohms. Uh, it has a special kind of amplifier in it that's designed to deliver current and not votes. Uh, but each speaker's 8 ohms, so you parallel them, you got 4 ohms. If you parallel two sets of those, you're now down to 2 ohms so on and so forth. Um, on automobile systems, automobiles are designed for 4 ohm speakers. And the reason for that is that they only got 12 volts out here to uh, drive it. And so unless they do something like increase the voltage, they only got a certain amount of votes to drive the thing. So that's why they... Uh, uh, it's more like the simulation I did earlier where I was lowering the power supplies. So anyhow, now we've seen three, three or four ways to uh, overdrive an amplifier. Uh, as you noticed, I didn't design this thing really carefully because I just wanted to see the wave shape. 
I didn't want to show how you would actually design it. In real life, this amplifier is going to go to another amplifier, and you need to know what the input impedance is of that. This voltage source here is probably your guitar pickups, and you need to know what the uh, output is available from those. It could possibly be another amplifier ahead of that. So I'm kind of cheating. I'm not really designing the whole thing out here. I'm just showing you the principles at this time uh, to actually design a uh, fuzz box or a distortion stomp pedal. Uh, you would need to do a little bit more work. I will attach to this eventually. It probably won't happen tonight when I uh, post this video. But tomorrow there will be on the uh, video some links to my website. And my website will be completely full of links. Both teaching you a little bit about op amps if you've missed that. And also a uh, really nice article that talks about creating stomp pedals for a guitar. And, uh, and then you're free to be looking wherever else you want to look. So that should be of help to you in understanding distortion. Where I hope to go very soon, I got some more of these to show you. If we go back to the schematics, I've got several other kind of uh, clipping units to show you. But then after that, I hope to take some of these outputs that we're getting and I, I'm going to write a program so we can analyze how much harmonics we're getting from these and what harmonics we're getting. Uh, that's going to go towards something else, which is an area where I have to work at in real life. Uh, although not in this much detail, this is mostly just because I'm a, a nerd and, uh, and I'm curious about something. But there's a real big problem with harmonics and power lines right now. And uh, that's becoming a really big issue. And we'll discuss a little bit about that later on. So there's a whole bunch of stuff to do with this harmonics. Uh, harmonics is cool. Anyhow, appreciate you listening. Hopefully you got something out of this. This was kind of a nice easy one. And if you want, uh, email me. And I can probably send you this QUCS file. And then you'll have to upload QUCS. Also in the links uh, on my webpage, I'll have the links to the YouTube videos where I talk a little bit about QUCS. And also my previous blog posts. Again, appreciate you listening. Hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, we're now getting into the fun part of this nerding out instead of just all math. Thank you. Scary fun.